take her? What are you doing? I'm here to warn you. She's leave now. She has a right to know. What? We've been tracking the situation in Seattle for a while. Unexplained disappearances. Killings. Someone's creating an army. An army of vampires? You know, obviously, there's continuity, you know, and obviously these guys have done it twice before, you know, um, and so the important thing for me was to listen to start with. So I think we, we had one-on-one -on -one meetings. It was incredible. Did, yeah, so first thing I do in terms of process is to meet every single one of these guys individually and just listen and listen to what they, what they loved about the other movies with regards to their characters, what, the, what worked out, what didn't work out, what they want, and then we do it again and we talk about script. And so by the time we'd all finished talking, you know, I knew exactly what, you know, they were after as well as, you know, what I was after and they knew what I was after. So when we'd rehearse, we'd just be focusing on the content of the scene. So to that extent, I was fully informed. Um, to the extent of constraints, um, you know, the, the reason they got different directors was different aesthetic and I was just so immersed in making the film that it became my own film because it, by virtue of it being in my head really. So, and, and the, if anything, um, I was encouraged to do more, encouraged to be more different. Um, but the tone of the film was always going to be different and we talked about it from the very first meeting onwards that this was the most mature film, um, that it was going to be more realistic in every way. Um, uh, a certain amount of darkness had to pervade, you know. So, um, so there were no real, you know, constraints per se. Besides, you know, the obvious things of keeping the story flowing continuity-wise and being faithful to the book. They're coming here. This means an ugly fight with lives lost. We're in. As long as we get to kill some vampires. I don't, um, no, I don't think any of us could have predicted, you know, how big this would have become. I certainly understand why it has, because the book series is incredible and it kind of, um, you know, takes you into this whole other world. Um, but I think at the time when we were doing Twilight, it was kind of, you know, it really had this independent feel to it. And I think we were just happy to, to be working on a project. And, um, yeah, and I, I think each time, you know, we're, we're very pleasantly surprised with, you know, just how passionate the fans are and um, and how excited they get over this. And you tend to fall in love with your characters, which is really, really unique. I mean, for myself, I love Emmett, and I love playing him, and it's going to be sad when you close a chapter to this book because it's been a huge part of our lives, this family and, you know, just building this, you know, this family unit on and off, off set. But it's a... Uh, it's really a blessing to be a part of a, a franchise that allows you co to continue on to do the sequel and to make the third book into a movie. And Eclipse was my favorite book to read out of the series. I'm, I'm really impressed with the action and, and the, the mix between the love stories. And I haven't seen the movie yet, and I can't wait to see it tonight. Um, but it's just it's really exciting to, to finish something off like this. Well, I was hopeful, you know, when we made the first movie that we would make it to the third. Um, otherwise, I feel like I couldn't really, like, justify my behavior. And um, also, you know, Stephanie wrote these, like, really complex, um, dynamic characters. And sometimes I think all of us can agree that, like, you know, the, the Cullen family, that you don't really have the opportunity to show that. And so you want to make, like, the most out of every moment that you have. And you're, like, overthinking everything, every glance, every smile, or, in my case, um, every nasty look. Um, so, yeah, I, I was really happy to have that opportunity. You know, it's a, it's a love story. At, at the root of every great story, it's a love story. I don't think it's... There's definitely elements of fantasy within the werewolves and shapeshifters and vampires, but at the end of the day, it's grounded in reality, and it's because it's a love story. And I think everyone can relate to that. They know how it is to feel um, unrequited love, uh, jealousy, revenge, loyalty, having to make choices. And I think this film definitely covers all that. Yeah, it's a true love story, which is lovely. I mean... 
uh, these days we, we live in such ironic times in terms of media coverage and the way that people write scripts and write dialogue and my journal, journalists write. Irony is such part of the zeitgeist now. To find something which is so unapologetically a true love story is so rare a and it's nice, you know. And, you know, and here it is, the, lo the true love story and the vengeance and everything is and we're saying orbits around it, but it wears it on its sleeve. And I think that it's culturally quite healthy you know, to, to, to see true love as, as quite a nice thing and not, not to get all angsty. And at the same time, I do also believe that what Stephanie's done with the vampire is somewhat institutionalized it, made it acceptable, given it a family, made it nice, made it somewhat a cipher for something very pure. But at the same time, there's a dangerousness because at the end of the day, he's a carnivore. At the end of the day, he goes out into the woods and he rips bears apart and, and drinks their blood. You know, as do all these guys. They go out <laughs> and, and, and tear mountain lions to pieces. <laughs> so there's a kind of sexy dangerousness to it. But it's taking the unattainably dangerous and making it lovable. And I think those two things together are, are, are really attractive, you know. <laughs> when we shot the campfire scene um, you guys you were there yeah you were I was there, there. Black Friday Remember, right Black Friday we call it yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh um, it was pouring and it was meant to be a warm summer night they were all lazing with their shirts off everyone's eating hot dogs so around a campfire about to hear the tribe's histories and it was a tsunami <laughs> of rain the entire night and we just had to shoot because our schedule didn't allow for like if it was a tsunami, we shoot. If it was snow, we shoot. If it was an earthquake, we shoot. And um, it just went on and on. And we had this fabric cloth over the top of us, which was just to keep everyone dry. But it was raining so fast that it'd just get this giant bulb in, which would actually just about burst. So we kept having to... It was insane. Who was it now? So, so you, weren't you standing yeah, no, in no exactly the place? It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After a while, communication. When it gets to about five in the morning, everybody goes... <laughs> 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 yeah, and and so he ended up stood where yeah. we poured it all out. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if I was more upset about the fact that it was freezing water or the fact that my abs washed off. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a fine balance, yeah. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Excellent. I, I raised my glass to you. Yeah, Excellent answer. It's, it's really unique to fans and what they go through. And I remember one fan, we're doing autograph signings because we have amazing fans who actually want our autographs, which is. <laughs> quite in a, a unique place to be in, um, but she asked for an autograph and asked if I, she could take me home. And I was like, oh, yeah, 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 what's your name? And she, she yanks out, you hear this clink, 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 big old handcuffs. And I was like, hey, and she has this like, eh. um, security stepped in, and I shared that story right after I, uh, Twilight came out, and then when I was doing the circuit for New Moon, Another fan was like, hey, you remember that story you said? And I was like, yeah. And she pulled out these fuzzy ones. <laughs> and then she's like, I have something for you. And then she like undid her jacket and had some little nice number on. And I was like, hey. Uh, but it was, it was really cute. And they're so, they're cute. There's no other way to explain this, uh, this, this love that they have for this franchise. I think for me, it was uh, last year when we were promoting uh, New Moon, we, had, we did this um, big Q&A in Los Angeles, and we were kind of, the whole cast was um, behind this cage, and all the fans were there. Everyone else, I think, turned away from the fans, and I'm the only one doing my little prom thing, like, hey. And then I see this fan with a bouquet of flowers and, like, a teddy bear. And um, she's like, come here. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, she shouldn't have. That's sweet. And you know, I go up to her. She gives it to me, and she's like, Give it to Kellen. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, all right, all right. I, I, don't, I don't have to have a, it's never going to be an ego here. 